Okay, for today we will look into uh, the moving forward. We have already uh, looked into uh, various aspect of the aerospace industry. From the beginning of the lecture, we have looked into the definition of aerospace industry, the sub uh, industry sector, and then we look into the global scenario and the Malaysian context aerospace industry development in Malaysia from the first blueprint 1998 and, and 2015. So what we want to do now is basically to look at the factors, the opportunities, the trend and drivers, and then we want to identify wh what can be done uh, more in terms of um, increasing or uh, providing um, activities, eh, uh, initiative for the aerospace industry to grow further. So, if we look at the um, activity that being done um, previously in 2015, where the um, Malaysia Aerospace Industry Blueprint uh, being um, uh, being crafted or being designed, eh, being developed. Basically, they follow um, a standard methodology. This methodology is what we call it um, uh, like uh, it's a four sighting eh, where you have a few elements, okay, where in, in order for uh, um, a, an entity or agency or a, a, a country to, to chart the way forward, eh, they have to use a methodology. So this methodology is um, uh, coming from uh, University of Cambridge Institute for Manufacturing Education and Consultancy Services that being used uh, by the Malaysia Industry Government for High Technology uh, when we did the Aerospace Industry Blueprint 2015. All right. So basically, uh, using this road mapping uh, method, eh, this that will focus in answering the three major question whenever you want to uh, put up um, a road map uh, the way forward for a country or an agency we need to know where are we now the current situation all right so the current state of the country um, or the current state of the industry at the moment okay and then we want to set where we want to go where we want to go meaning that what we are going to be become in the next uh, 15 years, in the, in the near future, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, and what's going to happen, all right? And uh, most important part is that how can we get there? So we have to lay down all the uh, initiative and strategies in order for us to achieve the target. So we have uh, uh, divided uh, the uh, phases eh, the, in terms of the phase number one, the trend and drivers. So we have already in our lecture, our previous lecture before the semester break, we have looked at the uh, current scenario. We look at the aerospace report by the consultant uh, companies. We look at the uh, trend in terms of the economy, in terms of the aerospace industry um, um, movement in the world eh? what what the uh, major players like Boeing like uh, Airbus are doing and how does it uh, affected the local sector like local aerospace sector in the country so we need to look into the trend and drivers what are the external and the internal factors influencing the Malaysian aerospace industry and how are this evolving. So, in your respective group, okay, because this is related to assignment number two, where you need to look into the trend and drivers, okay, um, based on the reports of uh, aerospace uh, consultants and then the movement of uh, aerospace economy, the impact of COVID-19 nowadays, right, how those trend and drivers will influence the local industry. And then we look into the opportunities. Okay, Your op The second phase is opportunities. What domestic and international opportunities do these trend and drivers present? Right. So this is the second task, uh, second activity where from the trend and drivers, right? 
maybe there are threat, there are uh, potential um, um, businesses that it can be turned into opportunities, right? Um, so you, we have to identify what are the opportunities and the opportunities can also be prior, prioritized, right? According to the uh, needs of the country. That's where we set the vision, vision where we want to become, where we want to go in the near future, right? At the same time, we will also look into the technologies and capabilities. These are the limitations, okay? Some of the uh, opportunities that um, occur, eh? for example, like uh, now uh, um, aerospace, uh, especially the airlines are really affected in term of, in term of the COVID-19. Eh? So in the current uh, present um, aircraft layout, eh, it, is, it does not allow uh, passengers to be separated or to be distant at least one meter so you can see that if you want to go to uh, the mosque or you want to go to the malls or eat in the restaurant uh, you must have at least one meter gap but in the aircraft uh, you sit there for two or three hours or maybe seven hours flying uh, for, um, in an, an aircraft you just sit next door. It's just maybe a few millimeters apart from one to each other. So the current setup is not really following the or comply with the uh, uh, one meter uh, separation from each other to avoid uh, COVID-19. So um, what are the uh, things that can be done in terms of uh, having a new lay layout for aircraft uh, and what are the technologies and capabilities that need to be to be uh, included eh? so over we over here we will look into what competitive advantages can the industry exploit to help realize these opportunities so the earlier opportunities right so can be translated into um, competitive advantages right and what additional capability and technology needs to be developed maybe some of the items let's say you want to do uh, metal a 3D print. There are already exists in the market where you can not just print plastic components. You can now print metal components. So, uh, like you print titanium, you you print steel, and a lot of other materials that are suitable for uh, aerospace applications. But what are the limitations? Eh? What whether we we need to uh, develop the technology? or we need to buy the technology, eh? adapt the technology from, from overseas. And the gaps and barriers, okay? Whether the gaps coming from human capital, let's say we do not in, have enough engineers, or we do not have uh, support uh, in terms of funding by the government or the, from the uh, financial institution, or in terms of logistic. So the gaps and barriers that will prevent opportunities from being realized, that need to be included, all right? So uh, that is the technologies and capabilities uh, phase. And finally, the how thing is that the enabling actions and what's being done and how can gaps and barriers be addressed to achieve opportunities. So we will list down um, or propose, uh, you, you as a group need to propose what can be done uh, in the next uh, um, years ahead in order to achieve the vision of the uh, uh, blueprint or the roadmap based on the trend and drivers, opportunities, technologies and capabilities and listing down the enabling actions. Okay. Let us move into the opportunities. Of course, um, the first phase is trend and drivers. I believe we have already looked into the uh, global and local uh, trends, eh, trend and uh, drivers that uh, from our previous lectures, um, probably it's best to just uh, focus on the opportunities, eh, what domestic and international opportunities can these trends and drivers present. So you uh, imagine that you are developing the roadmap for the aerospace industry uh, 2030, okay? So we would like to formulate a list of key priority opportunities, right? 
for the industry to pursue from now 2022 until 2030 yeah? so we we have a technique uh, to prioritize the opportunity uh, to develop the vision and uh, of the aerospace industry 2030 and mapping of future industry capabilities development so uh, even though i put it here a workshop activities of course we cannot do it um, in our uh, session now so you may want to do it in your own respective group to look into the opportunities for all the sectors eh? remember we have five aerospace subsector eh? namely na naming namely the um, um, maintenance repair overhaul we have manufacturing we have system integration we have engineering and design and we have education and training so all five sectors need to be uh, included in your group uh, activities so you have to identify opportunities for each subsector all right and then you have to do a discussion of course you have to review and agree on the list so each group will will uh, discuss among yourself and uh, decide oh this is a uh, good for uh, good to have for this um, um, subsector or this is a must have in our subsector eh? and then finally you need to do the uh, prioritization eh? uh, conduct prioritization for the opportunity okay so because we cannot take all um, uh, suggestion we have to, we, we are going to use a, a tool in order for us to identify which one is uh, doable which one is uh, maybe can be done but later all right okay let us move into the uh, what you need to do in your respective group okay so um, of course uh, you can use the notes that i've gave you uh, earlier in terms of the trends global trend and local trend where we are okay so we already look at 1998 we have a data set of 2015 already and you can uh, look into the global scenario and local scenario where uh, each of these subsector um, uh, status in the Southeast Asia for example eh? so you can then um, look into the trend and driver for um, all of this market segment okay so it is um, of course uh, this is not limited to this I would like you to focus on the five uh, subsector okay, uh, that I have already identified just now the manufacturing MRO the system integration okay not avionic and system it is system integration the engineering and design and education and training so there are five all together okay and then uh, the output basically looking at the uh, domestic market a list of opportunity from the trainer drivers you can then identify the list of opportunities based on the domestic market and at the same time based on the global market all right uh, step number two okay once you have the um, opportunities list of opportunities for each subsector you will be using this uh, tool wh uh, which is called attractiveness and feasibility right so what is actually attractiveness so any opportunity that you have um, proposed for example let us take one um, opportunity let's say um, um, in malaysia we do not have a specific aerospace university okay compared to in the us they have um, uh, aerospace university in 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 russia they have aerospace university in uh, ukraine they have aerospace university even in in turkey they have aerospace dedicated built university eh? so in malaysia we do not have such an entity so uh, we only have a aerospace program in various uh, university one in upm another one in joho in utm we have uh, usm and uiam eh? so it is it is not consolidated maybe the opportunity is to have one dedicated aerospace institution or aerospace university in Malaysia. All right. So, if you when when you have that opportunity, you have to then look into whether is it attractive. Yes, it sounds attractive. 
is it feasible so um, is it feasible to do it now or malaysia we do not need such um, organization uh, to have a consolidated uh, university in aerospace okay so what we what do we mean by attractiveness so the when we say attractiveness is basically a set of criteria that address important characteristics that gives positive impact to the country and the aerospace industry development such as economic growth so you have to look the aspect of economic growth in terms of attractiveness is it going to increase export job creation high productivities and others so when we want to decide any opportunity that have high attractiveness so you have to look into the elements of attractiveness okay that is attractiveness and then what is feasibility so in order for you to understand feasibility let us look into the defi definition here it is a set of criteria address issues related to implementation and readiness of the industry such as technology maturity whether there is a technology already uh, re readily available uh, how about resources do you have uh, local experts you have skills and experienced workforce okay the in is not limited to that only and amount of investment how much money you need to invest uh, the government need to come out eh? and then uh, in re related infrastructures like equipment facilities and support so all of this has to be in place in order for you to say an opportunity is highly attractive and highly feasible all right so this is where you discuss within your group when you do discuss you have to jot it down you have to put it in your report all right and uh, later on once you have done that okay you we we, put, we have like a set of scores eh, from one to five whether it is highly attractive one two three four five you have to have you have this kind of rubric where you then decide yes it is uh, attractive at level four okay and then in terms of feasibility feasible it is maybe maybe is at level three okay so when that happen let's say four and three happen you will end up to have somewhere around here okay somewhere around between four and three it is at selected emphasis if in a case where you have uh, attractiveness number five and feasibility number five it is strong emphasis so what does strong emphasis mean that when it being listed in your uh, blueprint it is highly recommended and it need to be done maybe for the next five years maybe for this those who are uh, falls within the selected emphasis maybe it is less priority it can be conducted maybe between five to ten years and if it is uh, having a limited emphasis right you may uh, decide that yes it is an opportunity still an opportunity you cannot just remove it right so it can be done later stage maybe 10 to 15 years right that's that's what we mean by uh, how you prior prioritize the list of opportunities okay right these are the um, what we call it the description when you you talk about attractiveness you need to look into these four elements in terms of the economics in terms of the growth of industry sustainability and national priorities so you it can you do not have to go through one by one meaning, meaning that for example like uh, the aerospace university just now in terms of economics is it um, uh, uh, going to be profitability eh, productivity or competitiveness yes yeah? uh, so the answer is yes maybe you can give five marks over there in terms of growth of industry maybe it is four sustainability is it in long run is it going to be sustainable yes it's meant for the future eh? it's not just for today's uh, aerospace industry so it's meant for the future and you can look at uh, other countries that have uh, their own aerospace industry I university whether it make an impact to the 
country eh, that goes into the national priorities, right? So um, year in year out now, uh, Malaysia has put up uh, aerospace as the priority areas. So it's about time for for us to uh, have our very own national aerospace university for example eh? so maybe it is five over there so this is just an example so how are you going to get the marks for example like you have a marks five at the economics growth of industry maybe four sustainability maybe four national priorities maybe five so the average mark from for attractiveness five plus four plus four plus five and you average it out maybe you get 4.5 so that would be your attractiveness point there 4.5 so this is 4 okay maybe 4.5 somewhere there so you can plot somewhere here and then you run through the feasibility criteria okay technology readiness maturity resources infrastructure and economic viability and finally you can plot your um, opportunity to build aerospace university somewhere maybe here or maybe there eh? so and then um, it's not just putting the numbers um, you need to be able to explain using the description here okay okay this is remember this is this is something that you uh, are aiming eh? you are aspiring that uh, this need to be done because in your opinion in the group opinion it is uh, based on the global market sector the local trend and it is about time for us to have our own aerospace university for example eh? so and it can be other opportunities as well let's say um, in in malaysia we do not have an aircraft program but previously yes we do have uh, aircraft uh, manufacturing program so we built our own uh, eagle aircraft we have md3 project but both project does not uh, prolong it is being stopped uh, due to many reasons okay so why malaysia doesn't produce we do not produce our own our very own aircraft similarly like indonesia eh? so so we have to relook back whether that is a priority or not with for similarly with um, satellite eh? satellite uh, why malaysia until today cannot build our very own satellite what happened to the satellite company uh, owned by government eh? it is called atsb astronautic technologies uh, sendirian berhad eh? so we have atsb uh, the government already spent nearly 200 million uh, for the development of uh, the satellite program but it we fail. Eh? We means uh, Malaysia fail. So why is it is that so? Um, why why can't we build our own radar system? Why there's so many why? Eh? So so I would like you yourself within the group to look into the matters and we uh, need to discuss. Eh? Meaning that uh, is um, it's not like uh, you discuss on your own uh, normally when we have this kind of activity i will normally go into the respective group and to see what has already been discussed and um, what's going to be uh, the way forward maybe some some of the elements you don't understand really and then that's why uh, we have uh, um, that that's uh, lead me to your to the next uh, presentation which is uh, the uh, assignment number two